hackers took control of a German Patriot missile deployed in Turkey. Ugh, don't you just hate it when your friends borrow your shit and let a total stranger use it? A giant Japanese robot is going to fight a giant American robot. I have it on good authority that Siri is going home with the winner. After that, Bradley heads to Anime Expo to ask people about a new discovery. And don't hate the cosplayer, hate the game. Unless that cosplay is Cosby. Bill Cosby's fair game. All that, plus we take a good look at the event. This is Starseed Activate. Gareth and welcome to this edition of Starseed Activate. Glad to have you with us as always. Now we have some really wild stuff to take a look at today so let's just jump right into it. First up, hackers briefly took control of a German Patriot missile defense system stationed in the Turkish sector. The missiles are intended to offer protection from any possible spillover from the civil war going on in Syria. Now these weapons were reported to fulfill unexplained commands. Their final goal and the location where the order came from are still totally unknown. Experts think that the hackers may have found a weak spot in the sensor shooter interoperability connect- You know what? It broke. Now look, I am not an expert on these things, but I have a pretty good feeling I know just how this happened. Whoever was supposed to be updating the software on this thing has probably just been clicking remind me tomorrow for the last three weeks. Most likely because he was in the middle of playing Command and Conquer. Let's just hope they get it figured out before some 14-year-old genius does and decides to start pushing buttons like it's war games. Okay, moving right along to quite possibly the most exciting story I have ever seen. An engineering company called Megabots, based in the American sector, has built a fully functional piloted robot. That isn't even the cool part. Even though that is wildly cool. Check this out. Meet the Mark II, 12,000 pounds of gasoline-powered fury. She's piloted by a team of two and can fire three-pound paint cannonballs at speeds of over 100 miles an hour. That's cool. Where it starts to get straight up bad ass is that they publicly issued a challenge to Sudobashi Heavy Industries. It turns out they happen to have the very first giant piloted robot. It gets even cooler. Sudobashi CEO Kagoro Kurata said that they accept the challenge. Then things get even cooler. Sudobashi challenged back, saying that they think the fight should be a melee one. The match is happening within the next year. This will give both sides time to make any modifications to get their human piloted giant fighting robots ready for a fist fight. With this, I think it's official. We live in the future now. We get to watch real giant robot fights starting next year. Oh, my inner child just osh koshed in his bagosh. Does anyone else remember the fake giant robot fights we used to have to watch? Achilles isn't moving. Get up! Get up! Maybe yet he could be down for a count. Oof. How can something be so bad and so good at the same time? I just don't know. Speaking of giant fighting robots from Japan, Los Angeles was once again host to Anime Expo. So our own Bradley Holzer is back with another installment of The Talk. It's time for The Talk. Hi, this is Bradley with Starseed Activate. 
I'm headed to the Anime Expo to discover what people think about supernatural phenomena and the newest discovered pyramid on Mars. Ooh, let's go! Hi, this is Bradley with Starseed Activate, and I am talking with... Isabel. Isabel, I have a question for you. Okay. So a lot of anime deals with supernatural themes. Have you yourself ever witnessed anything supernatural? Sometimes, about 3 a.m., I see little UFOs fly by. Uh, elaborate on that. What do they look like? Like typical flying saucers you see in old 50s movies. No, I can't say I have. Um... The only thing I can think of is when I was about five years old, it was after my aunt passed away, and all I see is in the mirror, I see her sitting next to me, just stroking my hair, saying, you know, like, it's okay, baby girl, because that's what she would always do for me, and her room used to be right next to mine when I lived with my grandma. Um, it was the Winchester Mystery House, and um, I didn't notice anything supernatural, but it was pretty cool to be in there. Not really. Um, just the typical creaks in the house. Um, I mean, I don't think so. Um, I've met a bunch of people that claim that they have, I guess. There's this one girl that I know that says she can see spirits. Like, I'm in my room sometimes and I hear a random sound or something. Mm -hmm. or, I, or I think like, I can hear my voice being called when it's, like, my name being called when it's not. Uh, well, like, sleep paralysis, I guess, and, like, really weird dreams where, like, they seem pretty real to me and, like, it causes like sometimes like really strong emotions. Uh, I remember the closet would often shake and rattle as if it was something was trying to get out, but there's nothing inside. And I can't tell if it was wind currents or whatnot, but it just struck me as odd because it was just the closet, you know, rattling. <laughs> so um, I personally have grown up in a very active household, to say the least. We've had whatever you like to call them. I personally go with spirits. Uh, you have your own experiences Spectres, as well. Entities. Yeah. Um, I like to be, I can believe so. I had a late dog, and back when I was around middle school, my dog passed away. Late at night, sometimes I would just see like a, a flash, like a white flash, how she would just run by the room. And I would like look, and like, I would say like, huh, that's weird. Um, when I was growing up, I was, I, well, still am. I'm very clairvoyant, and I was always visited by many spirits at my house. They were living there. They would come say hi or whatnot. So, on the topic of supernatural nature, in May, the Mars rover Curiosity snapped a photo of what appears to be a pyramid mm -hmm. on the surface of Mars. Mm -hmm. Here it is on the right. What do you think about that? I mean, from the picture, we can't tell like how far away the rover is. Um, it could be another rock, but no person was really there. And... I think it maybe could, but I think it also could be a result of erosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. The, I heard that there's been a face on it on Mars. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there are aliens on Mars that could have made the pyramid. I don't know, I'd say that's pretty, it's like potentially pretty spooky, but you mustn't always forget that there might be scientific reasons behind something, you know? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, without a object that I know the size of in particular, I couldn't really tell the size, so that could just be a really big uh, rock that cracked in a weird way. Mm -hmm. That's freaky, because like a pyramid, you expect it to be like made by humans. I guess it depends on how, how big it is, like what scale is this? I mean, it, it's a little weird to me, I guess, if it's like a huge pyramid, but if it's just like a rock formation that looks sort of like one, it's sort of like whatever to me. Mm -hmm. I guess it just depends on how big it is. What do you think about that? It's pretty interesting. Kind of wondering how the pyramid got there on Mars. <laughs> They're like, who knows, this could be anything. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh my God, does he have like some Yeah, I mean, kind of looked like a rock just like shattered perfectly into a triangle. You never know if it was actually made by some celestial being or it was just coincidence and how rock shattered. I think the Egyptians probably beat us to Mars. It's a very interesting theory. I like that. Life exists. That's all I can think of. It's like we may not know that people are out there yet, whether they be sentient beings or a gelatin blob or whatever they are. Um, it could be 
man-made or Martian-made or just weird nature breaking in weird ways. So, if an extraterrestrial came here right now, would you be welcoming toward it? Sure. Aliens seem cool. I would like to meet one eventually. <laughs> You know, I'm not sure anybody would be able to pick them out of the crowd. I think they might blend in a little too well. <laughs> yeah, uh, are they peaceful? <laughs> are they? I mean, it all depends on how they come interacting with us. When we greet each other, sometimes there's cultural differences. If they're from another planet, who knows how much, different, how much more different that is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I would love to meet aliens. I would love, just happy to see them. Be like, whoa, you know, that would just be crazy. Mm -hmm. If they have a welcoming toward me, I'll be welcoming toward them. But if they start to attack, then I'll, I'll attack too. Yeah. I wouldn't be welcoming if they had guns. So that all depends how they come in and introduce themselves. If they exert like a, like a force that's kind of like terrifying, like, whoa, they got battleships, you know. I'd feel that we wouldn't really have much choice because we don't have the technology to keep up with them at this point in time. Depends on them. Mm. I personally would be welcoming, provided they're not like, pew, die! <laughs> right. Uh, I probably wouldn't. I like, I might be like a little bit social, but I'd still have like that guard on me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could just be prepared for any, to be attacked. Yeah, that's what Scar said. I believe that. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was fun. Hey, tell us more about what you found. Well, I met a lot of, uh, interesting life forms. Oh, well, did anything stand out in particular? Yeah, I was really fascinated by how thoroughly people examined the photograph that I showed them. It really made me realize how important discernment of information of this type is. Again, great work. It was great. <laughs> so great, I felt really inspired. I decided to start setting up an online community called the Conference for Understanding the Existence of Extraplanetary Findings. Do you know what that word is? Yeah, it's queef. And this time, I actually looked it up in the dictionary. It's not there, mother. Okay, Bradley, I feel like there might be some sort of pattern forming here. Oh, and even better, I checked the domain name registry, queef.com, still available. Oh, looks like Sailor Moon and Sailor Venus just sent me a text. Huh. Actually, I bet, I bet they would be interested in talking about the queef. Well, ja, matene. Thank you, Bradley Holzer. And finally, something for those that might be looking for a rabbit hole. I wanted to explore a topic that there's been a lot of buzz about online. I'm referring to what many people have been calling the event. And this concept also goes by other names in other communities. Some call it an event horizon, singularity, a black swan event, or even compression breakthrough. So what exactly are they talking about? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Let's try and do the Cliff's Notes version. It's said that the event is really more of a series of events leading up to an extraordinary experience shared by everyone on the planet. Now, no matter what you believe on a spiritual level, there's been lots of things happening lately to indicate that something like this could happen just based purely on the rapid social change sweeping the world. If we solely looked at this from the angle of how fast technology is developing, something game-changing could be around the corner. Hell, even the Jesuit Pope has been speaking about the possibility of a debt jubilee. It's not hard to imagine that we could be quickly moving towards a moment that could have a greater impact on mankind than the invention of agriculture, industrialization, or even the Tamagotchi. Curious? It should be. The beginning stages of massive change are visibly underway. People are waking up to the facts. Just ask all the bankers that have mysteriously died in the last couple years. Uh, especially that one that committed suicide by shooting himself in the head with a nail gun nine times. What? Nailed it. It's also said the event calls for the mass arrest of previously unreachable war criminals. What war criminals, you ask? All of them. Even the head of the UN probe just declared Netanyahu a war criminal. 
Look, we're at a point now where even many mom jean wearing moms know that the official story on 9-11 is kind of a joke. The information's out there if you got eyes to see it. Also, strangely, on a personal note, I was actually approached with a deal for a children's book that I chose to decline, but it was going to be called The Little Building 7 That Couldn't. So where is all this information coming from? There are a few sources in particular that talk about this kind of stuff. Places like prepareforchange.net, uh, Cobra's blog, Portal 2012. Also look at Benjamin Fulford. The Citizen's Hearing on Disclosure was really interesting. And who could forget the galactic historian Andrew Bartzis. Aren't you just a little curious? Like, just a little bit? No? All right. Listen, I can only show you where the rabbit hole is. You're the one who has to go down it. Everyone has to decide for themselves. Right, Lawrence Fishburne? You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Mm. Big changes are coming, regardless of what any of these sources have to say. Every single day we move further and further into unprecedented territory. Whether it's AI, space exploration, technological breakthroughs, or the rebalancing of global wealth and power. If you're watching this on YouTube, there are links to all this stuff down below. Oh, and also, if you're still unsure about the existence of extraterrestrials, stay tuned. We have a ton of cool stuff to show you. Well, that's our show for now. See you next time, even though time is fake. <laughs>